is the Sea Stream Angler 120 PD Pedal Drive Fishing Kayak. It's a budget friendly pedal drive kayak, and today I'm going to review it. How about that Doug DeMiro impersonation? This is a Lamborghini Centenario. First, I should, uh, I guess, say why I'm doing this review, and that's because. When I look for information on this particular kayak, there just weren't many reviews out there. They're either in a foreign language or they were sponsored and clearly biased. There's no sponsors here. I'm just a dude with a camera, a kayak, and a channel. So we'll start with, I'll do a full walkthrough of all the manufacturing specs and features. Then I'll get into some things that I like and don't like about this particular kayak after a few times using it. And then we'll get it out on the water and take it for a drive or a paddle, or a pedal. So this will just be a review of the kayak. If you wanna see how I set this up for fishing specifically and see it in action, uh, plan to take it out musky fishing, walleye fishing to a big bass lake and do some crappie fishing with it. So uh, it'll be seeing a bunch of action yet this summer and fall. So if you wanna see this, this uh, kayak in action, uh, you'll probably wanna subscribe and uh, those videos will be coming up pretty soon. So the Sea Stream Angler 120 PD. It is made by Feel Free, which is the parent brand. It also makes kayaks like the Moken, the Lure, the Three Waters, Big Fish, and then Sea Stream brands. They do make a paddle version of the Angler 120, but it's laid out a little bit differently, specific to paddling needs. But today we're just gonna look at the pedal drive version. So some of the manufacturing specifications of this kayak it's uh, 12 feet long, but if you tape it from handle to rudder, it's about 12 feet, 8 inches. It's about 35 inches wide, and they, they claim 97 pounds. It's, it's heavy, but that just means I think that it's durable. It's made out of rotomolded, low-density polyethylene rather than uh, vacuum-formed and bonded uh, ABS like some other budget pedal kayaks. Uh, it comes in one of three colors this is called urban camo it also comes in terra and wave wave being blue and terra more of a greenish camouflage and the msrp on this pedal drive kayak is i think 16.49 but you can find it online i think for about 13.99 at specific retailers not including shipping some of the features i should start with the hull and uh, you look underneath here and you see that it's a tri-hole design for added stability an improvement over a uh, traditional uh, canoe style bottom. Got a molded in grab handle in the front, some bow storage with shock cords. Then uh, you got scupper hole drains, rod tip holders uh, for uh, lateral rod tip storage. Then we've got these channels that hold the pedal drive system. And let me just go over the pedal drive system really quick. It's a chain drive pedal drive and install it by putting these pegs in these guides, putting it through the hole, sliding into place, and latching. This blue switch here is uh, just an indexer, so you turn the pedal until the propeller hits it, and that indexes the propeller vertical so that when you uninstall, it's already lined up if you want to clean weeds off your propeller or remove. Next is these tracks. These are uni tracks. These are specific to Feel Free brand kayaks. They uh, do that so that you can buy this Feel Free specific attachments. Um, but you can buy adapters to use a more traditional T-track T style attachments. You've got a reinforced floor. Sorry, it's a little dirty, but it's been used. Side grab handles. You've got shock cord paddle holders on both sides as well as grab handles on both sides. Here you've got your rudder raise and lower. You just pull on this and it's got a cinch lock. The seat is a pretty comfortable mesh seat. It's adjustable forward and rearward. And here I've got it in about the mid position and the steering handle over here with this blue knob. So this adjusts, this turns your, your rudder while, while operating. The seat installs into these tracks, so to remove the seat, it's pretty simple. You just remove the strap from this cam lock buckle and dethread the strap, and the seat slides forward and out. Back here, we've got 
rubber bungees for the rear of the onboard lateral rod storage. We got flush mount rod holders on each side, included with tethers. Rear, you've got a large rear tank well with scupper holes, shock cords, a rear grab handle molded in as well as attached, and the the drain if you were ever take on water. It's a fully sealed hole, but you could maybe get water in through some of the screw holes or other openings that you'd create for additional items. So that's where you drain the kayak. This is a, an aftermarket Scotty track that was added, so disregard this. So those are some of the specifications and features. Now I'll kind of give you an idea of what I like and don't like so much about this kayak after having it in the water for, I don't know, five or six outings. One thing that stands out right away is the feel-free Unitrack as opposed to a traditional T-Track. These, uh, although they're made out of aluminum instead of plastic, they have a bit of flex. Let's see if I can show this. So the track itself flexes on the, the gunnel quite a bit. Um, and I, I've, I've attached similar items on this Scotty that I have in the back and it's quite a bit more stable. So in the future I may uh, attach Scotty tracks just on the outside of the unit tracks here and, and stop using the adapters. One thing that I do really like about this kayak is how the pedal drive works. It, it works really well. It's smooth, it's fast, instant reverse. Um, incredible speed and with very little effort almost just with the weight of your legs you can maintain a trolling speed of about two to two and a half miles an hour it's really impressive and it kind of self cleans if you feel weeds getting wrapped into the propeller you can quickly back pedal and and then go forward again and it seems like it self cleans pretty well it's stable it's sturdy um, it has a little bit of noise, so when I have the GoPro mounted up on the top of it, you can hear some of the noise, and I'd have to do some noise reduction in the video to, to knock that down. But in, in the long term, I plan to get the GoPro off of there anyways and off uh, onto a RAM mount. But that's just one thing I noticed. It's a little bit noisy, but not, not anything too bad. So I should mention the adjustability in the seat is just probably unprecedented. I'm six foot, six foot one and I'm in the middle position and my leg is about fully extended for pedaling. This is a comfortable pedaling position for me. I, I still have three places I can move backward and three places forward. One thing about the rudder though is that if you were to be in one position further back, if you were to turn all the way to the right, you would actually hit this knob on the seat and you would you'd lose some right hand turning radius. I have it adjusted as good as I can get it where we're using pretty much the full stroke back there, but not having too much hysteresis at the same time. So that that's one maybe minor design flaw, but what I did to solve it is I just take this knob off. I don't find it necessary and I just use the rudder handle by itself. The seat though, very comfortable, nicely adjustable. Although the seating position is really nice, uh, it's a little low for my taste, I guess, if you're trying to fish your knees will get pretty high and you can end up hitting your elbows on your knees because of the low seating position. You don't have that issue with uh, like a Hobie drive pedal system where you're, you're pedaling more straight away from you. But when your knee comes up to the top pedal position, you can kind of get your elbows into your knees. Another thing here is that if you're, if you're a biker and you're used to pedaling with the ball of your foot on the pedal, you see if I can show that here, you'll absolutely hit your feet on the floor. I've got size 11 feet, but it's not even close. You can either point your toes and pedal, which is terribly uncomfortable, or just move your foot position to the middle of the pedal and, and then it works okay. Another annoyance is that the, the paddle locks, they just don't work well, at least with the paddle I have. They sag quite a bit, so you put the paddle on there and the paddle ends up right at water line. The blades of the paddle will want to catch water. You just can't get it high enough with the paddle lock. So those to me, they're not usable and I plan to install a couple of uh, different paddle holders. One uh, notable thing is that this kayak has absolutely no enclosed storage whatsoever or any storage that's within reach from the seat. There's no cup holder. There's no trays to store any lures or tackle of any kind. Another thing I really like is that when you're when you want to stand up, you can stand 
with plenty of foot room on the sides of the pedal drive, but if you just detach the seat, you can flip the seat up and out of the way, and then you have a large platform back here to stand on, and the kayak's actually quite a bit more stable when you stand further back across the like the beam, the maximum beam width of the kayak. Okay, so that's uh, a review of the kayak. Now let's get it out on the water and take it for a drive or pedal or whatever. Right away, you can see that it's pretty stable. Let's see how easy it is to stand. Got a pull rope here, but we're gonna try it without first. So. Okay, standing up is no problem really. It's, uh, it's a little tippy, but once it kind of hits the pontoon on the outside, it gets a lot more stable, it seems. So I think uh, fishing out of it could be tricky at first, but once you get to know the limits, I think you'll, you'll find that it's, it's pretty stable. I think it'd be hard to flip the kayak, but falling out might be more of the issue. So let's get the pedal drive out and see how she runs. To get the pedal drive down, just align the prop, slide it into place, buckle the latch, and you're good to go. The effort to pedal at a cruising speed is almost nothing. I mean, it, this thing really cuts water with little effort. It really kind of beats expectation by far. I mean, it, to paddle this fast would require quite a bit of effort. To turn, uh, we're at a hard left turn here. And obviously a, your turning radius will depend on your speed a little bit, but that was probably about a 15 foot turn radius on that hard left turn. Reverse is very nice, instant stop. And to travel in reverse, no problem. You can probably see the wake in front of the boat. Yeah, you, you got full speed reverse and forward and to stop motion in one direction or the other is almost instant with reversing the pedal. So real quick on how it paddles, um, it's a 12 foot boat, so it's gonna track straight, a lot straighter than a 10 foot if you're used to that. Um, for speed, let's see how it does. Yeah, there's just, it takes so much more effort to paddle at this speed than it does to pedal that it completely makes the pedal drive worth it. One thing you lose when you go to a pedal drive though is your ability to do a quick spin. You have to have a, a paddle to really spin around quickly. The rudder is only going to get you that 15 foot turning radius, so just something to think about. If you're used to being able to turn on a dime, you just can't do it without a paddle. So that's my review of the Seastream Angler 120 PD kayak. If you're interested in seeing more videos of this kayak in action, and you'd like to see a video on how I rig this for fishing, just go ahead and subscribe and those videos will be coming soon. Catch you on the next one.